All right. Uh, the first question is about uh, the micrometer is often called micron. How many microns make up point and one kilometer? And it has uh, part B and C too. What fraction of uh, centimeter equals to one micrometer? And how many microns are there in uh, one yard? See, I would be confused. Okay, good. Who can tell me how many five five dollars can we break into if we, if I give you a twenty dollar bill? Four. How did you do it? Division, right? Like you had the twenty dollars, and each you would uh, break. You want to break it into five, right? So you divided, and you got this four. So that's exactly you need to do when you want to find out how many. Yes. Uh, I think my main problem is like. Right? Setting up yes, the problem. Like when you read it, it's how to comprehend. Yeah, yeah. it's different. I, <laughs> I do understand it, but I think um, you know the, this comes with the practice of uh, doing it more, maybe, and also um, maybe I don't know. Like you know, you should like when you read a storybook. How would you comprehend? Do you understand all the storybooks too? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this, this should be just about the same too. So now here they ask, like, you know, they said, what is a micron, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, how many microns will make up a kilometer? Uh, That's all. Is the first one. So now is this clear? What's the question? You understand the question right now? So they said, how many microns make up a kilometer? So it's just like how many fives. But you guys make up 20. So this is the exactly the same thing. How many microns make up kilometer? That's always the question. Is that easy? You were like in the what I think a nanosecond you took to answer this thing right here. Mm -hmm. Right? Even not even right. like a you know maybe one tenth of a second you took. It's not. It's <laughs> that. It's not how to do it. It's just seeing it. Like you like hold on, I gotta figure out how to get this and this and how to do this and this. And it's confusing. I you know, but that. this is like the beginning. So you you have to be like oh you know thinking in this way because you, you are engineering major, right? Yeah, yeah I'm a computer scientist. See, computer yeah. science means like you know this is like the. Hard. Like the uh, A's, alphabets of your computer science, and you will get like a complicated sentence of like a spelling bee contest. So you be prepared. Oh you got to be prepared. And I'll try my best to prepare you. But anyway, like, you know, when you read a book, when you read a problem, if you think that no, you are unable to understand the whole thing of it, what I want you to do is I want you to at least like you know, break it into segments. And of course, like you know, in this problem, you read one sentence at a time. So you, you see that the first statement says the micrometer is often called micron. That you understood. It's just a statement, right? And then they are asking how many microns make up one kilometer. So do one part at a time. If at all you don't understand, whatever. So break it into segments and try to understand each and try to follow, build based on that. Okay. I know that it is a little bit hard compared to you know maybe high school to all of a sudden if you jump into these things. It is hard. I do understand that. But no, you know that your goal is way higher, so you definitely need to jump high. Otherwise, you can't reach it. Okay, you need to be prepared for that. Okay, all right. So exactly similar thing. How many fives make up this one, and how many microns will make up this one? And uh, when you have uh, your uh, sheet, I hope I still have that sheet. Uh, this is the one I have right here. I can't believe that I thought. Oh yeah, this one, chapter one. Okay, this is the one I was following it, right? And can we use the cheat? Uh, no, I mean uh, the sheet. You know, you know the sheet on the test of the. Uh, uh, in your uh, test. SI. In, yes, I mean in your test, I all. Um, what's your name? Him. Is he sleeping or is he using his phone? Are you using your phone or sleeping? You know, <laughs> this class is for your own benefit. You know that. You know, I want you to best make the best out of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. No phones. Anyways, in your exam, I will give you the formula sheet and as well as these conversion things. But 
are always, always strongly encouraged. You all know these things. And you know, when we have like, you know, tens of them, like centimeter, millimeter, kilometer, nanometer, picometer, parameter, whatever, all these things. But out of all, I made you, I told you that you now we use more often the millimeter, kilometer, giga, mega, and uh, nano, milli, and only six of them I think I asked you to remember, right? So this micrometer was one of them. So these are the things you use a lot of times in your undergrad or in your life too, usually. You see that like, you know, milliamps, you hear that, right? You have all these you know, fancy, um, you know, iPad, iPod, or cell phones, so milliamps is the current you always use, and also gigabyte, you know that, right? You know, computer memories and everything. So you come across these things a lot of times. So I want you to remember some of them, but for your exam purpose, I will give you all the formulas you need for the test. Okay, so don't be panicked for the test yet, because you will have all the information which you need which you use in your test in your form that she's already in, along with your test. So that's something you don't have to worry about. But um, I want you to understand what how to start the problem. That's what is the thing you need to worry about. So I know these things already, but I want this is for your reference when I'm putting it, okay? So it's on blackboard. Yes, it is on blackboard, yes. All this these slides are on blackboard and this video also I'm going to post it on blackboard from here on. I'll record each and every class and I'll send it. That way, you know, you will have uh, somebody talking, what is it, and everything you will have in there. Okay? So, <clears throat> you already figured out how many fives uh, will make up 20, which is you put the bigger number, whichever you want to break it in, whichever you need to break, and into what? You're going to break it into that and you're going to make a ratio. Here, so they're asking how many microns are there in kilometer. So they are asking in kilometer how many micrometers, right? So this is the thing they are asking for. Mm -hmm. And when you look at your formula sheet, let's say, I will give you a formula sheet, not so complicated, but I'll give you this thing right here, like which is a you know kilo or whatever like that, mm -hmm. and I'll give you these numbers right here, something like ten per whatever. Okay, so if I give you these then you will quickly look into your cheat sheet and you will see kilometer. Mm -hmm. So where is the kilometer in here? I right see here, right? Kilo? Okay. So I'll give you just kilo, not kilometer. Because when I give you kilo, you could use it for kilometer, kilogram, kilowatt, everything. So I'll give you the prefix kilometer. When I say kilometer, this is simply a number. This comes, this associates a number, that's all. And when I say micrometer, this is a prefix number, that's all. Something like mega, byte, this is simply a number. He's talking about a number, that's all. Okay, so I'm going to, in your sheet, you will be seeing like this. Kilo is 10 to the power of 3, and mega is 10 to the power of 6, something like that I will give you. And when you're in your formula sheet, you're going to look at something like this, and then you're going to look at micro. Where is micro right here? Right here, right? So you're going to see the 10 to the power of 4. This is my yeah, 10 for 6, yeah, 10 for 8 is 6 right here. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll see those things. So which one is big number? Is it 10 for 3 is a big number? Or 10 for 6 is a big number? 10 to the 3. Oh, 10 to the 6. No. 10 to the 3. 10 to the 3rd. 10 to the 3rd, right? Obviously, if you have a positive power, it's a big number. Oh. If you have a negative power, it means 1 over 10 to the 6. Obviously, if you make 10 to the 6 parts in 1, it is oh, yeah. be much smaller than this. We should know that. Yeah. All right? This small thing, I want you to definitely know that which one is big. This level, you should be aware of it. Okay? So, you know this. So, obviously, so whichever is the bigger number. So, I'm explaining in the layman's language. Okay? So, even if you don't know what to whatever. So, when you look at your formula sheet, you will see these two numbers. The bigger number goes on top. Smaller number goes at the bottom. Okay? So, that is something like, you know, you put the... 20 on top and you put the five dollars at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly similar. When kilometer goes on top, micrometer goes at the bottom. And this has meter in here, meter in here. So that's nothing but kilometer by micrometer, which is nothing but the big number goes on top, the small number goes at the bottom. Okay? Thank you. So I want everybody to give me the 
homework sheets back. And uh, as I said, like, you know, your trying is more important. You coming to the conclusion that is something, um, that's fine, that's fine. You know, pen or pencil, that doesn't really matter. But, and also, like, and as I said, um, even if you don't get the correct answer, still you will find. But going through the right process is the thing I want you to. Um, thank you. Yes. So 10 power of 3 divided by 10 power of negative 6. What would be the answer for that? 10 to the power of 3 over 10 power of 3. Let me get out of the calculator. No, you don't. No calculator? Look at that. You should be able to answer that question by looking at it. You, you can do it. Somebody said that. I can't do that. You, can't. you should be able to. See? No, the 10 the of 3 divided by 10 of 3. I'm sorry, you said divide. Oh, yeah. So, yes, 10 to the 9. 6 plus 3 is 3. You're calculating for that. <laughs> so, this is nothing but you add up. When you bring it up, it's going to be positive 6, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to add that. So that's mm -hmm. going to be 10 power 9. We talked about it in the first classes of our session. You were there, right? I wasn't there. Oh, thanks. That's why you should never miss the class. I was traveling to school. Oh, that you was the one now who emailed me that no, you're traveling and you were missing the first class? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anyway, so if you have anything like 10 to of x times 10 to of y, you have so if you have something like 10 power of x and 10 power of y, say this is called base, this is called power. Mm -hmm. And if you have the same base in multiplication, then you are going to put the same base, you're just simply going to add those powers right here. Okay, so I'm guessing if you so divide, you subtract the power. That's it. So if you can have something like 10 power of x divided by 10 power of y, then you're going to subtract the powers. Okay. So in the same case, what I, what I did, if I have like this, what I did was 10 to the power of 5 with the same base and 3 and subtract whatever you have here, subtract. Okay. So minus of minus made it positive. So that's why you don't need, yes, you are done. You can pass on that uh, homework from the piece. Thank you. So, you, you know, you can definitely use the calculator, but I want you to practice some of these things. That way you will be, you know, better. Okay, so that's how we do for the first part, which is how many uh, kilometers make up micron, how many kilometers will, I mean, how many micrometers will make up a kilometer, 10 to the power of 9 microns will make up a kilometer, so this is our final answer, 10 to the power of 9 is our final answer for the part A, okay, we got that? So, I think I will go in a um, segments that way, that that way you will know where I started and where I ended. I think that is something I need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, following it. I'll try. Okay, now, uh, then part B is uh, what fraction of centimeter equals to one micrometer? So, what fraction of centimeter Makes up <laughs> micrometer. So now here they are asking um, something like a uh, why is uh, twenty. So this is how the question is framed right now. So earlier they asked like how many fives make up a twenty dollars, right? So you could easily say four. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> Is it not easy? Yeah. It's easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they are asking like you know, in twenty, how 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 much is you know, what the fraction? What fraction is a five? So you're going to put that five and divide it to twenty parts. So how many? One so one fourth is nothing. Five is one fourth of twenty. So that's how they want the answer for part B. So they want to know whatever the thing one fourth whatever like that. 
is micrometers. That's what they want to find out. So now in this case, we are going to put the small number on top, big number at the bottom. So understand in that way and do it. So now um, the micrometer goes on top and centimeter goes at the bottom. Now I have meter, this is, I told you, right, this is a number, this is a number, and meter, meter. I have this meter, meter cancels up. Now I'm left with this, with the C right here. When you look at the sheet, you'll see that micrometer is nothing but in the power of negative 6. And when you look at the centi, it is in the power of negative 2. Okay? So. So it's going to be negative 4? Negative 4. Yeah, here, you got it now? How did you get that? You, did you need a calculator? <laughs> no, right? So something like this, very good answer. Plus 2 gives you 10 to the power of negative 4. So 10 to the power of negative 4 of a centimeter is nothing but a micrometer. Or in other words, um, 1,000, 10,000. So 10,000 part of centimeter is a micrometer. If you take a centimeter and you make 10,000 parts of it, then you will get a micrometer. So something like and what's the next one? How many microns are there in one yard? Okay. So now, uh, when you look at uh, uh, micrometer, you see that 10 to the power of negative 6 meters, right? So, but we have yard. Do we have a relation between uh, no. meter and yard? We don't no, have, same, right? Same so convert same. yard into meters and then come up with a number which, you know, makes up that number. That's all, okay? So one yard is nothing but... Uh, Let's convert it to whatever the language we know. One yard is how many feet? Three feet. So you may know that already, right? Very good. And uh, each foot is how many inches? Two. Perfect. So I have already this three. And feet I'm converting into inches. So one foot is 12 inches. So now I have my answer in inches. Still not meters yet. So I need to go further from inches to, we have a relation centimeters, which mm -hmm. you'll have in your uh, Formula sheet, but one inch is uh, 2.54 centimeters. So this, you, even if you don't remember, you'll have it in your cheat sheet, okay? Mm -hmm. Or the formula sheet. So 12.3 is uh, 36 times 2.54 in centimeters. So now I see meters, so I could just stop right here, right? Mm -hmm. I have a meter right here. So if you come up with the number right here, I. Oh, mine's on the top. Yeah. Let's put down. Oh, wasn't it? I think it was nine. Was it nine? I don't remember. Mine's is on underneath the sheet. Okay. Skin is okay. Let's see here. Sheet 3.15. Oh, three times. Okay. All right. Sheet did here, but 91.44. So I think probably it was. Might not be 91, right? Yeah, yeah maybe 91.54. 36 to 60. So I think it is 90. Oh, because I I did yeah, I did I did minus 9.1. Yeah, because you got to negative six, something like that. Or I, think, six. No. I don't remember. It was something. Yeah, you finally I think you'll get a similar answer anyways, but uh, that's what it is. Okay. Oh no, it was to the it was to the good time. Okay, but we didn't get the answer finally. It's not the final answer yet. No. It's not the final answer yet. This is uh, centimeters, right, here? Mm -hmm. So we want the, how much? Micro, right? So we want micro means how much? 10 power of negative 6. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have this answer as 91.54. And uh, centi is nothing but 10 power of negative 2, right? Yeah. Meters. Okay. In place of this meter, they want to look at this micrometer right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this 91.54 times 10 to the power of negative 2 as it is. And then in this place of micrometer, 
I'm going to, so this is like one micrometer is nothing but the number of negative six meters. Can I write uh, the number of six micrometers is nothing but one meter? Everybody understood what, how I wrote that? He cancel it or, so you just, I want this one on this, only meter on this side. If you bring this one here, what happens? One over ten power of negative six micrometer is nothing but meter, right? Yeah. This not this thing right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wrote. So ten power of negative six, one over ten power of negative six is nothing but ten power of positive six, right? So that's what I wrote. It's the same formula which you have been learning. Or one meter if you divide into ten power of six parts, that is my yes. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see. Where did you get the, 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 the thing from the little? This yeah. micrometer? Yeah. micrometer. So, okay, because I want to get the answer in here, yeah. micron means I will look at my cheat sheet and I'll see that it's micron means, uh, uh, where is that micron? Somewhere? Million. Yeah, yeah right here, right? Right here. So, when you look at it, it's in for a negative six. You see that number already. You know that. This one from your cheat sheet. Yeah. This means that. So I want, um, that is, let's say anything, you can put it right there. So if I put M here, that is M right there. So if I want just for M, I don't want anything right here. I don't want just one. I want one. So I want to divide on this side by 10 to the power of negative 6 and divide on this by 10 to the power of 6. Okay. So I'm going to have one here. So when you simplify this one, which is 1 over neg 10 to the power of negative 6 is nothing but 10 to the power of 6. Okay. 10 to the power of 6 of the microns will make 1 meter. So I'm going to multiply with that number right here, 10 to the power of negative 6. I mean 10 to the power of 6 micrometer. So when you do this, you have 91.54 times 10 to the power of negative 2 times 10 to the power of 6. So just simplify this, these two numbers right here. That will give you this one as it is times 10 to the power of positive 4 micrometers. So this is what is will be your final answer for part C. Okay. And uh, so that finishes the first problem. And oh uh, uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, I, I told you. Like, I'm sure the final answer would be. I made a 9.1 times 10 to the third. Yeah, that's exactly correct. So you just moved this one up, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly correct. Yeah, yeah, somebody gave it to me. You hear it? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Okay. My homework's behind. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty much everybody did it. Correct. Everybody did correct. So you are. So then, how did you do it when you didn't know how to do it? You did it right here. No, I don't know how to do it. It's just by like breaking it down. I need practice to see how you do it. You know what I'm saying? So I you didn't get any help or anything from anybody, right? But no, I didn't get help. Oh, yes, I definitely got help from people. Oh, yes. A lot of help. But it is just the way that I have to see how you did it. So, but now you understand. Like, yeah. if I give you the same problem in your exam, you will be able to yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 So you have just the test coming, just the problem by itself. Alright, so that's the first problem. <laughs> 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 I got this from Jimmy yesterday. semicircular with a radius of 2,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. The average thickness of its ice cover is uh, 3,000 meters. 
How many cubic centimeters of ice does Antarctica contain? So you have to change uh, the kilometer to meter and stuff. So everybody's got it on this side, right? So if you have a um, circular object, how would you find out the volume of it? Well, you can't do the size. You got to do the radius or something. Mm -hmm. The V is uh, three. Is it no? It's four over three pi r cubed. Okay. So because it is a you know sphere kind of the thing they gave us. So we already have a radius of uh, kilometers and they want your answer in what? Cubic centimeters. Centimeters yeah. like that. Okay. But then we have to do it like through the radius. That's true. But you didn't teach us that, so I had to look that up. What, what, is, what do you mean by radius? See, you taught us what V equals, but I didn't know how to do the, the reverse way for the R equals. You already have an argument. So what you need, what I should have taught you, I don't understand what you're... Um, well, I thought, okay, because I, well, I got help, and they were saying that um, to find R, I mean, they were like, telling me like, to look for R or something like that. R is what they give it. I don't know, they just showed me how to do R, and I was like, oh, she didn't show me how to do that. They showed me, they told me that R equals what, what did 3 you over 4. He you had your home right yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's at the bottom. Yeah, but you already have R given right there. I, maybe they were just showing me. Because that, that's, I was like, oh, she didn't teach us that part. Okay, so uh, this is the volume of a sphere formula right here, okay? Okay, so <laughs> this is the formula of a sphere. Yeah. But in the only difference to this to this is in the sphere, you will have, a, you know, everywhere the same kind of radius, right? But here, I mean, you know, obviously just like a circle, imagine like a soccer ball, right? Soccer ball. Even though it doesn't have anything inside of it, but, you know, it's just like a, you know, circle thing. It has the radius uh, from inside, anywhere it's going to be same. But the only difference in here was, like, you know, it has the radius of this, but the deep is a little bit different. The depth is different. Okay? So, I yes. thought that it was uh, 3,000 meters. Maybe. So we can yeah. do that to hide more. Yes, exactly. So usually, so when you have a sphere like this, this is the formula right here. Okay? So, but since you have some spherical, but this is nothing but like, you know, let me give you this uh, thing right here. It's a cube. What is the volume of it if I have a side of this? Seven. What is the volume of this cube right here? You tell me every time. Tell me. Oh, side, side, side. 
Very good, right? So psi times psi times psi, right? Mm -hmm. So it is nothing but you are multiplying psi three times. Mm -hmm. How about in the sphere? Does it change anywhere? Like it is going to be same, right? You are going to have no matter which side you measure, it's going to be same R, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, so it, it means you are multiplying the psi times psi times psi. That's how you got the R cube, which is psi is same in the spherical thing, like all that is, is the radius. So that's how you have this R cube right here. But in this case, do you see that like you know, it has the R on every side, you know, length and width kind, but the D is the only thing which is different. The depth is the only thing different. So you are going to multiply 4 by 3 pi, but R squared on two dimensions, but depth is the only thing which is different. You understand? So this is the only key thing you need to understand, but um, uh, other than that, everything else remains same, and this you could look it up in um, anywhere, so... I mean, spheres, um, volume, I'm not like, <laughs> you will find it anyways. But anyways, like, you know, since I said, like, you know, if something, if it is missing, then obviously, you know, in the homework or whatever, we'll teach. So, so this is the only difference you're going to make when, you, in, when you're trying to find out of the volume of the ice in the Antarctica, okay? Mm -hmm. So, which is 4 by 3 pi, instead of R cube, you're going to break it into like this, which is same, or keep your multiplying three dimensions uh, lengths, which is something like height, width, length, and height. So S, S, S in the cube case. So in this, in this case also, radius in this direction, radius in this direction, and how deep it is, like deep. So that is this D right here, how deep it is. Okay, so that's the thing you're going to do, but other than that, everything else same. So you already know four by three, Pi is something is a constant and R is a 2000 kilometers and this is square and depth is 3000 meters. So you're going to simply do the math. Pi is 3.14. Oh no, 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 I wasn't talking about the first one. Sorry. This no, I was I was thinking about it like when I was asking you earlier. I was talking about something different. Oh, this is that's why I, that's why you were confused. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I just I just thought I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So anyway, so now this K stands for a number. What is that K stands for a number? Thousand. Very good. Okay. So two thousand as it is, and K stands for a number that is a thousand or three hundred three, whichever is same, right? So I'm going to write meters as it is, and I have a three thousand meters right here. So now I have everything in meters, I'm just going to put that meters, uh, I mean, um, this, yeah, this had a square, right? So I have a meter to the power 2, so meter squared, and this has another meter right here. Meter squared times meter is going to give me a meter cube. Then I'm going to multiply everything as it is. So I'm rewriting again, so 3.14, and 2,000 times 10 to the power of 3, can I write this one as uh, 10 to the power of 3? Can I, everybody is okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to make my life a little bit easy. 10 to the 3 times 10 to the of C. How much is that? 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3. 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3. What is the answer? Mm -hmm. Oh, 10, 9. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. you add them up, don't it? And, add you, and 3 plus 3 is not 9. Oh, my fault. 6. I'm tripping. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> 2 to the power, 2 times 10 to the power of 6 squared, and again, this 3000, I'm writing it as 10 to the power of 3, okay, just to make my math a little bit easier. So I'm rewriting the whole thing, 4 by 3, 3.14 times 2 squared, how much? 4, right, 2 squared is 4, and 10 to the power of 6 squared, how much is that? 12, right, so when you have like this, you multiply this power times whatever the square, okay? So 10 to the power of 12, and then you have 3 right there, and 10 to the power of 3 there. So you're going to just do the math, and 10 to the power of 12 times 10 to the power of 3, it's going to give me 10 to the power of 15, and we do this math, so I, and I'm going to cheat by looking at this, somebody's answer. Charles, did you do the correct answer? Should I copy or something? No, no copy. No copy or something. <laughs> Yes, it's so long. That's not you either. Let's see. Okay, this is not so But you think yours is correct? Okay. Yes, 
So 1.885. So probably it is uh, something like a something like this maybe. Three twelve times four is forty eight. Forty eight for uh, probably it is uh, forty eight. Yeah, I think it was one eight eight point five. Or no no what was it? It's that number, but yeah. it depends on what you do with yeah, your decimal. Yeah, I think this is what it is. I what you do with your exponent. Yeah, so I think V to Q. This is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's, uh, how do you that's what mine kind of looks like. Yeah, I'm thinking 4 times 3, 12. 12 times uh, uh, 3 is 36. And then about 36 times 1 point yeah. something. So it should be me. Maybe. So, uh, just the decimal part, you know, I want you to verify. But otherwise, I, I don't want this one in meter cube, but I want it in centimeter cube. So, I'm going to, each one meter is nothing but 100 centimeters. Okay? So, in place of a meter, just put this number right here. So, that's going to give me, just don't call me on this number right here. I'm just uh, guessing that probably it is. Go with the concept. So, which is 100 centimeters to the power 15. Uh, no, 10 power 3. Yeah, so it's going to give me 18.85 times 10 to the power 15 times, this is 10 squared to the cube. So it's going to give me 10 to the power of uh, 6 mm -hmm. centimeter cube. So it's going to give me the answer of uh, 21. So 18.85 times 10 to the 21 cubic centimeter. It's just a lot of math, but uh, I, I'm not sure about the final mm -hmm. numbers. Mine. So you both got the uh, same answer, not same answer. No, you didn't get the same answer. No. I mean, um, somebody messed up with the powers. So like, you got 1.9, but one of you got 21, you got 24. So I think according to mine, I don't know, so she got, uh, no, I don't know, somebody messed up with the power, so, you know, who made a mistake that, I don't know, but you went through, through the right uh, procedure, yeah, procedure, but something went wrong, so one of you is wrong with the last number, that's all, but otherwise everything looks Correct. Okay, so similar to that, you should do, you should do it. And then the third question. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> a lecture period of 15 minutes is close to one microcentury. How long is a microcentury in a minutes? So is it... So because they gave like you know one, 50 minutes is one micro century. Is that not? Is the is that the one they are talking about? Yes. Then yeah, then it should be uh, easy, right? One minute is equal to how much? It should be just a simple division. I'm thinking there shouldn't be any conversions at all. But they said close to, so that is something the I error for such but. Uh, as far as I understand this problem, it, it is pretty easy one, has, unless I'm making a mistake. So they are saying 50 minutes is almost equivalent of one micro century. Right, this is what they said, right? And how long is a micro century in minutes? So, this is not the answer. Just about, yeah. Right? It is. But but, uh, what am I Hold missing on. in here? Microcentury? Microcentury. Hold on, so if you see. Is this something I didn't understand? That's the answer in the problem. Right? That's it. 
That's it, right? What's the, what's the question? What I am I missing? I see that like you know you didn't hold up, but uh, yeah, I did a lot. But uh, years, days, years, minutes, minutes, years. minutes. Oh yeah, I did sixty times. Yeah, I did. Fifty two point five. Yeah. Times. Mm -hmm. So they just wanted just to joke about it or what? Hold on, hold on. Because... <laughs> I'd like to say this. I'm no, gonna... I mean to say it's like, you know, a 50 minute lecture looks like a century or something like that. They wanted to joke about it or what? Because it's just the answer, right? So a lecture period is close to one, one micro century. So it's you close. need to micro century to century, right? Wait. Wait. No, I mean... You know, they are asking this question right here. Okay, they're asking so. how many, how many well, the minutes. Answer, they're asking how many yeah, minutes how many is minutes. in the approximate micro centimeter. Uh, uh, lecture period. Yeah, I got so I got fifty two something. And they eight. put in fifty yeah. minutes. So I'm just thinking that they are just trying to joke around. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, something like you know, a teacher mm -hmm. teaching for fifty minutes is like a century. That's what they want to talk about. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. otherwise, this is the answer. Is mm -hmm. yeah, did yes. Close to one micro century. So that's all you got to put? What does that mean? Tell me. It's close, but it's not. It is, yeah, but it close means like, you know, we cannot just uh, you know, come up with something. Close means how close, like, you know, I could say, like, you know, my house is close to the school, which is 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Somebody might think that it is far, so what, how could I differentiate between, you know, that is like opinion mm -hmm. thing, right? So, According to this statement, if I'm thinking that no, this is um, the thing, that should be the answer, right? How? <laughs> but I'm just thinking that no, probably they were just joking about a lecture period. Otherwise, that is the answer. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, that is the answer. So that they had the statement. Uh, they said like lecture period is close to this, and how many minutes in uh, micro century? So it's a reverse question. Right? <laughs> how many minutes? In a uh, micro century. It's 50. Right? Very good, right? Somebody said it. Is it not correct? Yeah. If I'm not reading it, yeah, if I'm right. not following it correctly. So that's that's what it is. But I'm just thinking that no, probably like you know the they were just being sarcastic or something. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we could if it is sarcastic, then you know this is not the answer, we got to just do it. Okay? But otherwise, so so they want to find out our uh, lecture period is how long is that in uh, centuries. That's all. Okay, just don't look at this number in the brackets right here. If we consider that, then that should be the answer. But that's, I don't think that that's the correct answer, okay? So I let me just go with the centuries is 100 years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good, okay. So let's convert just a uh, micro century. So we need answer in minutes, okay? So we know what is micro stands for? Six. Very good. And century is how many years? So finally we need the answer in minutes, okay? So I'm going to go with whatever I know. Century is nothing but hundred years. But this is not the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for this right here. So I still need to keep going. So ten for six times hundred is what? Ten for negative four, four right? Perfect. So I'm going to write 10 power of negative 4 and uh, 1 year is how many days? So let's think that this is not a leap year and we are going to go with 365 days. Is that going too far? Yeah, huh? would, you, would you want us to do that, the half, like the quarter of the day? I've seen that on some. Quarter of it for what? Like 365 point two five. Point two five. You, you could do it, but... Uh, Will it change I'm, the answer? So, I mean, yeah, I know it will change, it will change, it will change, 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 Four, yes. uh, with every four years you'll have a leap year, so you quarter it and you add it. So you could definitely do that. So three hundred divided by four, which is twenty five, right? So you add twenty five days to this. It's hundred years. Right. No, not twenty five. You add like the half. It's like uh, every day is longer. It's longer. It's 
like a day or four too. Okay, so so it'll just sure. be point two five. Oh, I think it's fine. Yeah. You think it's correct? Yeah, it's correct. Okay. So since every four years we get a leap year, so we're just adding that point two five to this right here to make sure that we didn't miss the fraction too. So just rewriting the whole thing. 365.25 and each day is 24 hours. But still, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm rewriting the whole thing. 24 of negative 4 times 365 times 25, 24, and each hour is 60. 60 minutes. So, this is what I'm looking for. So, if we simplify the whole thing, we get the answer in minutes. So, I'm just going to cheat again. 52.6 minutes. Okay. Then why did you write again 25.6 minutes? I mean 52.59 minutes. Then answer is 25. So can we still put 50? 52.59. What did I put? I put 52. Is it 52 what? Yeah, I got the question so point was right there. All right, okay, so that's the third question. And the fourth question. So uh, they had the percentage error, let's say if you look in your textbooks or something, probably they would have given some number which is a uh, fifty minutes, right? In your, uh, like in your, uh, okay, now I see why that 50 minutes is given. In reality, they said it is the 50 minutes, okay? So 50 minutes, but we got the answer of 52, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the percentage error? That's what they asked us to find out. And actually, is it is 52.59, and uh, approximately it is 50, or is it that divided by 50? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's much better. Let's see how much is the percentage. Let's go to 2.59 divided by 52.59, and how much you get it multiplied by 100. That gives you whatever. Mm -hmm. How much is the 4? 4.95, so about 5% error. So that's the question. Now I understand uh, what the question is. That 50 minutes. Is. As I told you from the beginning, the final answer is not my concern. Okay. The procedure, if you understood it correctly or not, that's my concern. Okay. So even if you, you know, you don't get this one right here, but you still did this one, you will get like 95% of the points. And uh, the rest of the 5% is for the final answer. But if you do this one, don't do this one, you get uh, a zero. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Even though it's perfectly correct, that's going to be your point. So, all right. Uh, so, look at the fourth question. And uh, we can write back. I'll be right back with the fourth question. Keep looking. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's 
Kushida did it too. Mm -hmm. No, Kushida did it too because I did it. They did it. Marcus did it too. It's in the So, when we do this, this is something bigger. It's going to be positive. So, because I did this one, which is smaller than that. So, that's why mine's just like that. Brother, she should cut class earlier for tea time. She did. 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 Oh, yeah. well, I didn't know how to do it, and I wasn't definitely on the back of my day. He just gave it to me. He was like, well, just know. Yes, that's right. I think uh, you're right. I just looked at the problem and I gave it, but uh, yes, you need a little bit of additional information because it's iron, so it's based on that, what type of cubic is that you need to find out. I think uh, iron is a... For the four, question number four, uh, the density of the iron is uh, given as 7.87 grams per cubic centimeter. And I think I tossed this one in last class, right? About the density? Yes. Yeah. All right. And the uh, mass is, uh, or M, is this one right here, 9.27 times 10 to the power of negative uh, 26 kilograms. So if the atoms are spherical and tightly packed, what is the volume of the iron um, atom? And uh, what is the distance between the centers of the adjacent atoms? So... is how much. Okay. Uh, what is the density formula from previous class? M over V. Very good, right? So, this is given. This is given. Can we find V? So, let me think it will be a V over M over V. That's it, right? So, if you know that already, then I don't need to do this one. So, V is the thing, so we need to find that it's going to be M over that. Just put in those numbers and do it. 9.27 times 10 per of negative 26. Okay, this is something else. Let's see. Yeah, you have yes. to change this is, it to Yes, K. exactly. So, here you have grams per centimeter cube, and here you have uh, kilograms, so they are not in the same system. Either you have to change this one into grams, or this one into kilograms. I think converting this one is easier, right, into grams? Because just yeah. K uh, is, K stands I changed it to kilograms. Doesn't matter, which one?
whichever, okay. whichever you prefer. Finally, you'll get the same answer well, because it's. Uh, can you do it in grams? Because. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. I want to convert it to grams. That is easy because K stands for what number? Thousand. Right. So I'm going to convert this one into nine point two seven times ten to the negative twenty six times ten to the three grams. So that's going to give me ten to the twenty six. Um, negative twenty six minus three is. I mean, whatever. Plus three. 33, right? Yeah. Because I don't have extra rooms on this way. Ah. Okay, is it correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. 29? Did I do it wrong? No. No, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so you know, sometimes I make math mistakes, you know, something like it will be written 9 here and I'll write 20 at the bottom. So make sure you pay attention to what I write. So this is grams per cubic centimeter. This this get cancelled, so your answer will be centimeter cube. Whatever the number you get, divide nine point two seven by seven point eight seven, you'll get some nine point eight one eight times ten to the three minus twenty nine. Maybe like this you get, that's why you got the uh, minus 21, right? So. Wait, huh? 29. 29. And it's all? Yeah, 1.18 times 10 to the negative 29. So that's the final answer. Yes. Okay. No problem. So if you did the right math, and I'm just following what you said, but it looks like it is not correct, but I don't know. Since you said it, I'm just thinking that maybe you're correct, but. Uh, you know, 31 and 23, and this should be about one point something. One point one eight. Yeah. One point one eight. Yes. So why you got negative 29 here when you have already 23 right here? Because uh, yeah. I. At the bottom. Uh, when you divide, it's a three. Wouldn't it be? It's a. That Somebody made a mistake. Like, 10 to the so you should get 10 to the 23. That's how you should get something like this. Uh. I got something like this one here. Why 29? I thought it was for the, this one is 26, right? Is, is this is something I wrote right, wrong? Is well, it correct? When, when you divide, oh, would you not add it? That's what you forgot. Okay, so times it's times 10 to the three. Yes, that's what it bottom, is. Right? At the bottom, it's times 10 to the negative. Yeah, times 10 to the negative. Times 10 to the negative. Why do I have like it's that? A, it's the density of. Iron. Density of iron is 7.87 gram per cubic centimeter. That's what is given. No tin for of things so there. I think on the homework it's about three. That's what is given? I see here 7.87, that's all. I don't know what I sound a little bit of low. Why you have that? Okay. Okay. Well, that's how, yeah. Still, you should, if you did that, your answer would be meter cube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, meter cube is 10 to the power of negative 6. Um, 10 to the 2, 6. So it's going to be negative 21. Still, it is wrong. Still, it is wrong. Yeah, yeah, minus 3. That's why. Yeah, I understood what you did here. I understood, but I still think that there's something wrong. Let me just check. Okay, this, my answer is in centimeters. Okay, that's why this is the answer. But let me do it in your way, which is uh, instead of converting into uh, grams right here, I'm going to convert this one into kilograms and see. Okay? So, this yeah, is the correct right answer, but it is in centimeters. Okay, there's nothing wrong in here. Okay? But let's see. Still, I think that your numbers are a little bit wrong in the powers, but let's see. 7.87 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mm -hmm. kilograms, right? Yes. Times uh, centimeters is nothing but 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. Just positive. Negative, yes. Yeah, moving down. Right? This is right, right? So 7.87. Charles, you think you learned too much already? No, oh, no. Right? Pay attention here then. So 10 to the negative 3, so this is going to be 10 to the negative uh, 6. No, 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 it is. No, it's positive. See, look, it's positive. 
But you're going from because uh, once you, small unit to a big once unit. Once you move this, one, two, three, that's a positive three. It's a negative because you move from big unit to small. I mean, small to big. So when you Number move growing. this way, it's negative. When you move this way, it's positive. Positive, yeah. yeah. Because, you oh. know, meter is a bigger unit. Meter is a bigger length. So in a meter, you will have 100 centimeters. Uh, well, then you are right. Okay. See, that's why I was saying that, no. Your numbers are a little bit different. Okay, seven point eight seven times ten to the three grams. I mean kilograms per meter cube. Okay. So now I'm going to use this number in place of uh, this one right here. So that's going to give me nine point two seven times ten to the negative twenty six kilograms divided by seven point eight seven times ten to the three kilogram per meter cube. So yeah, you're right. Okay. So it's going to be 1.19 times 10 to the power of, I mean, 1 8 1 8, 10 to the power of negative 26, 10 to the power of negative 3, so you're right, okay, 1.18, 10 to the power of negative 29. So which one should we do with like? Yeah. Both are same, as I said, this is in centimeters and this is in meters. Okay, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. but, uh, oh, the same see. answer. Yeah, uh, okay. it's the same answer. One is in meters, one is in centimeters, that's all. You will be fine. <laughs> so that is that. And, uh, but the part B, mm -hmm. they want us to find out what is the distance between the centers of adjacent atoms. So, which is nothing but the radius, let's say, right? Okay, so. But I think in this case, it should be a little bit different. Let me see if uh, they didn't do this part B. So, I find R. Yeah, what is the formula for R? We have a formula for R. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. No, this is not correct either, but anyways, I think just for this problem, it is, let me see, here. Uh -huh. it's the same thing, it's the same thing we you wrote, it's the same thing you wrote, but uh, it is not wrong, it is not wrong as such, but it, it, because I'm a physicist, like, you know, any atom, when you look at, uh, like, something like iron or whatever, so just, we think that, no. Iron atom is right here and iron atom is right here. So this is how we take well, that. Not two, right? This yes, is like in a, in, if you have a cube thing, then okay. each corner you have an atom. So center from here, distance from here to here. This is what is the distance between two centers. That's supposed to be the answer. But uh, I don't know how the textbook answered it. But anyway, so according to you, what you thought was? Because I mean, I, 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 I Two radius. Okay, that's what you did? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's fine then. Yeah. So that's... You understand uh, what I'm doing for the last part? Mm -hmm. So they I said... It's a spe so we figured out what is the volume, right? So should I use this number or this number? Whichever number shouldn't matter anyway. So I'm going to pick up one of those volumes. So I'm going to use maybe meters one. So volume is from part one. I got this one right here. This is what most of you did, right? Yeah. So this is what is volume. And uh, three, right? mm -hmm. As I'm saying again? Oh, okay. This is a volume, okay? So, and uh, the so iron atom is a spherical one. That's what they said in the question too. So if it's a sphere, what is the volume formula? Four, three, four, five, four, five, right? Three. So if you want to find it, find the radius of each thing, so iron atom, this is iron thing. Okay, so if you want to find the R, how would you find it? Right? You just you want just the R on this side, nothing else. So you're going to divide this by four by three pi on both sides. Okay. So I'm going to get three by four V divided by pi. Is nothing but R cube, but I don't want R cube, but I R just want R squared. R only. So you cube. Oh, you it down. to the power one third, not one oh, square. <laughs> so okay. you're going to do one third on both sides. So this will be cancelled. So we left with three by four V over pi. Uh, why do it by one third? Because it's cube, right? How would you cancel three? If you want to give it up three, you want to divide by three, right? Okay. So that's what I did on here, okay. like that. 
So if I do it on this side, you have to do it on that side too. So this is what is the formula. So I didn't have to give you this formula, but you know, you just need yeah. to reshuffle things and should be able to do it. So there's a, I think the last statement is the only thing probably you wouldn't know, which is uh, how to find out the distance between two atoms. That's something is a tricky one. Okay, so R you're going to find by doing that 3 by 4. V is 1.18 times 10 power of negative 29 divided by pi and one third like that. So simplify it and finally you keep the root it, then you will get the answer of 2.8. This is the 2.8 10 power of negative 10 on meters is the R. Okay? So they wanted to know if you have, a, so in reality, so any atom, the any material, let's say if it is iron, so if you look at one chunk of iron, this is how it will look like. So you will have like this. So this is how the particles look. This is how one uh, thing of iron material, if you look at it, this is how it will look like. It, it will be made up of four, not just four, it's in three dimensions. On this side four, this side four, this side four, this side four, on this side four, something like that. In a cube, this is how it looks like. Every corner will have an atom at the center, something like this, okay? So they wanted to know what is the distance between here to here. So it is. this is nothing but an R, right? This is nothing but an R. So they wanted to know how much is the distance between center of this or the center of this one. So it is two R. So I have one R, so you're just going to find two R. So did you get the Google help, or how did you find this one out? I didn't have, I didn't have that part. I have the book. So in the book, you just mentioned that you have to do it. No, like how to break it down. Oh, how to break it down also is given in the solutions? No, there is a formula there. For uh, doing this two R? This one again? Yeah, this one I understand, but how do you know that you have to... I think 2.8 is the final answer. 2.8 is the final answer, that's what it's given? 2.8, 4.9, 5.6. The final R is like 1.14. Oh, okay. To get you the final answer. Oh, okay. All right, that so... That one is the final answer, yeah. So this is R. So okay. one, two R's, should have yeah. A, yeah, this is great. So this is how it sh should have uh, been. So that's last thing I think of. So it has to be 2R? Yes. Mm -hmm. 2R is your final answer and that is the added <coughs> Determine the number of hydrogen atoms required to obtain one kilogram of without anything, or maybe with little help also, it's good. I'm glad everybody's working so hard. So, <laughs> determine the number of hydrogen atoms required to obtain one kilogram of hydrogen, and each hydrogen atom's uh, mass is one U. So, um, one, uh, U is the mass of one hydrogen, and uh, I think one hydrogen atoms is uh, 10 to the power of uh, astronomical unit, right? I mean, uh, how 10 to the power of negative 27 okay, kilograms, right? Mm -hmm. Grams, negative 27 grams, right? Or negative 27 kilograms. Negative 31 kilograms, I think. Is it not? Mm -hmm. Kilograms. So one U is, uh, this is correct? 66167 should be fine. So this is good. I somehow feel that this should be negative 31. 
So this is uh, of uh, when you say you, it's nothing but uh, these many kilograms. So if you want to find out uh, one kilogram of uh, hydrogen, right? Oh, I did my, I was like, I didn't do that. I did, um, cause, um, 10 to, to the third power grams equals one kilogram. So then I did 1,000 grams over, because it gives you the, the mass of hydrogen is, uh, one gram, or, I mean, one mole hydrogen. No, this is one, where is it? Over here. One mole of hydrogen. Yeah, energy. one one mole of hydrogen. I didn't even do the U. I I for it to just look, overlook that totally and completely. So this is nothing but you know, one the U, which is going to have these many. Yeah. See, I did a thousand grams over one gram uh, mole H because I had canceled out the grams so I could get in some moles, and then I put one thousand moles of hydrogen times. You know, low 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And yeah, that's how I did it. Okay, so it is a one mole of hydrogen. Is, okay, so the, the one kilogram, so each is these many kilograms. So one one kilogram of hydrogen we have, uh, that would be each is, um, no. so how, uh, one kilogram of hydrogen will be how many? Um, yeah, so uh, in other words, can I say something like that? One U of H will have Okay, so this is what it is. One mole of hydrogen will have these many atoms, okay? One mole of hydrogen will have these many atoms. I'm still lost. This one, do you know this one? One mole of forget about that one. Okay, because do this one first. One mole of hydrogen will have how many atoms? Oh, one of the other number, right? Right. So that's those many atoms. Mm -hmm. So one U. According to what is mole? Mole is nothing but how many of what is the whatever the mass of it is the. So something like half, one mole of carbon is nothing but twelve AU, right? Or astronomical units or arbitrary units, right? Twelve U. It's nothing but its atomic mass mentioned in the uh, chart, right? Mm -hmm. How about oxygen? It is nothing but six AU, right? So in the same way, one U of hydrogen is nothing but going to have these many atoms. So this one, you got it from the periodic table, that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right. now, yeah. so now we want to know one kg of hydrogen will have how many of those? Mm -hmm. That's the question, okay? So this U is nothing but... 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms of hydrogen will have. So do you multiply that by? So this multiplied by this divided by this number right here. Oh. So that's going to be 1 kilogram times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 divided by 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 is going to give you, give you, so whatever that number. It's going to be a huge number. Oh no, it's just, it just changes the power mm -hmm. of the 6.022 is times 10 to the 26. That's right. But I don't know, because I did my six for you guys, so I might be wrong. What, how, what, did, what did you guys do? That's what I did right there. I thought this is how we were supposed to do it. <laughs> That's the same thing, actually. Whatever you did is the same thing. Thousand moles of uh, hydrogen is this one. It's not thousand moles. I mean, no. Uh, Why well, I got one thousand? Because I did, I did this, mm -hmm. the grams, and I just divided it, got rid of the grams, and then I turned it to moles of hydrogen. That was a little part. That's how I kind of did it. Okay, I, did I, I think uh, this is what it is. So one gram of hydrogen. So this is what uh, we. So just same as uh, one mole is nothing but uh, x 
grams of whatever that atom is. It's mass, okay. Let me put this one right here. Mass. Grams. Everybody understand this one? One mole of anything is nothing but its mass expressed in grams. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if I want to find out one mole of carbon, it's nothing but its mass. When you look at it in the periodic table, it would be somewhere close to 12. So this is what is the answer. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. So one mole of, um, let's say, calcium, and you look it up, it's going to be 40 grams. So when you look at the periodic table in the fourth row, it is uh, 20 is the atomic number, 40, close to 40 would be the atomic mass. So this is what it is. Okay? So in the same way, one mole of hydrogen, when you look it up, it's one. Okay? It's one gram. So each mole, according to the uh, Avogadro's number, each mole of anything, each mole, of anything will have 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. So this is what is also a statement which we already know. Each mole of anything, each mole of carbon will have these many atoms, each mole of sodium chloride will have these many atoms, each mole of water will have these many atoms like that. Mm -hmm. So now we want to know in uh, according to the problem each one mole of so according to the statement, one mole of anything, right? So one mole of hydrogen should have how many atoms? These many atoms. Okay, now, one mole of hydrogen is how much? One gram, right? So one gram of hydrogen should have how many atoms? 10 to the 23 atoms. So according to the theory, this is what is the statement. One gram of hydrogen should have these many atoms. How much hydrogen do we have according to the problem? One kilogram, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that already. So each gram of hydrogen should have a 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 kilogram. atoms. So I have a one kilogram, which is equivalent of how much? Just a thousand. Right? Mm -hmm. Kilo is nothing but 10 to the power of 3, right? So I'm going to write it as a thousand. So 1,000 gram of hydrogen will have how many atoms? Mm -hmm. So you can multiply this number yeah, with this, 76.02 times 10 to the power of 23 times, times 1,000 and divided by this one gram right here. So these two will be cancelled, so this is going to be 23. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 3, of 10 to the power of 23 times 10 to the power of 3 is going to give me 10 to the power of 26 mm -hmm. atoms. So those many atoms you will have in a one kilogram of uh, uh, hydrogen, which didn't require what is U stand for. Okay? So that gives you the final answer of that. And uh, let me just go over, how do I call it? Kiddis? Is your Kiddis? Is it correct? Okay. All right. She asked me one question in the last class. That is, if we have something like this, dt, how do we write it? So this is how we write, right? Okay, so she asks, why do we write, you know, this looks as if d squared, d squared, and x is right here, and uh, you have a, uh, you know, t times t, t squared, and it should be like this. This is what she said. She says, why don't we just write it like this? d squared, x over d squared, t squared. Why do we write like this? It should have it like this. That is what she says. Do you think it is correct? Yeah, 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 I'll do it, yeah. You think it, it should be, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It looks like. But actually, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? To show that you distributed. So, I mean, when I say, I'm sure you understand this one, right? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? This part right here. Just like one. Taking it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
Take a derivative, right? Exactly. Very good, right? So in that case, what you're going to do is you're going to just simply take a derivative of x. So this tells me that I take a derivative of x is the variable. And I'm going to take that derivative of this using this variable right here, t as the variable right here. With respect to t, I'm going to derive, der take a derivative of this x. So, and one, one time I do that, and then again I'm going to do whatever the function you get right here. So that again I'm going to do the derivative of right here. Okay? So, it is not that I'm multiplying or doing anything. Okay? So, this is the thing. And the, this is where is the function. This is a function of something, whatever. Okay, so we are, when I'm saying like this, when I'm saying d by dt of whatever, again, d by dt of whatever the function right here, so I'm doing the function's derivative. So you're going to left with, again, a function right here, or a dash x, let's say. So you're not really multiplying or anything. So do not consider this as a multiplication of it. It is not what we are doing. So whatever you're going to do here, that's something function. And uh, you'll get another function further. And that you're going to do it as this. So it's not going to be like this. If this is writing notation like this is wrong because it tells you like, you know, as if you are multiplying it and with respect to, to t squared, you are doing it like that. It looks like that. But actually in reality, what you're trying to do is you have a function. You're doing it uh, with respect to t. And whatever the function you are left with, again you are further de deriving it with that. So that's why you write it as d squared with respect to, to t two times. That's all. You understand? Okay, so it is not the multiplication. So writing like this tells you that you are deriving it, the function, with respect to, to two, two times. Like not just one time, like two times. That's the difference. Okay? So that's the thing. I know. <laughs> I told you first thing. My accent is a little bit different, but you can follow me, right? So, yeah. So, that's what it is. So, we don't write like this. We write like this because it tells you that you are doing the derivative and both the times with the t only. So, that's, that's the meaning of it. Okay? It's not the multiplication. So, we are going to continue with chapter 2 in the next class. And uh, we will be done with the chapter 2 in the next class. And, of course, we'll have a test next week. We'll have a test next week or Thursday. Thursday, you have the test on the first chapter. Chapter day. Tomorrow, yes, we'll finish the second chapter. Oops, you can stop